Hello everyone, Giltar here with part two of my review of the 1 to 144 scale high grade Universal Sentry NRX44 Ashamar. Now, you are seeing this mo mobile suit in its mobile armor form, basically its vehicle form. Uh, it's pretty, pretty odd to be nice. If I were to be more blunt and frank, I would say it's pretty ugly, but I like it, so <laughs> that's why I bought it. Um, there's definitely nothing that was falsely advertised about it. What you see in, in online uh, stores and their you know their catalogs where they list the Ashamar and show photos of it, um, yeah, I mean it's pretty truthful. What you see is what you get. A a sort of life preserver donut on the top of two legs with rocket engines at the bottom, and that's the mobile armor mode. And well, of course you have this beam rifle here. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it for the mobile armor. Nothing too spectacular, but. It might float your boat if you're someone like me. Uh, now getting on to the pros and cons, I'll start off with the cons as I do normally. First and foremost, it is a a very ugly model kit, a very ugly design. Not even a model kit, the Ashmar is an ugly mobile suit. But it's not necessarily a bad thing. I think it looks pretty neat, even in mobile armor form. Uh, but it is, you know, that's the thing, that this is going to be the number one detriment to the Ashmar is that it, most people probably won't like the way it looks. I, and I don't blame them. It is a really ugly thing. Especially in, in mobile armor form because, you know, if I were critiquing this as a Transformers fan, uh, which I am, but if I was looking at this as a Transformer, I would say it's an ugly design because it's so obtrusive. And, and you know, obviously these are legs on the bottom of a sort of life preserver essentially and you know the part of the thing the thing about transformers is that you know they're robots in disguise but the thing is is that i'm not too sure because, well, i haven't watched data gundam yet but i really don't believe that most of the designs in gundam that have mobile armor forms are really trying to disguise themselves i mean for the initial sort of shock in, you know, as a uh, you know a tactic a psychological tactic in warfare yeah i'm pretty sure that they, that's what they want to do you know the, you know, enemies will think this isn't a mobile suit, and then all of a sudden it turns into a mobile suit, and you know, obviously enemy forces will be you know confused. But aside from that, once that happens the first time, uh, the the, in, the intel will be pretty quickly spread, and you know after that, you know everybody's gonna know the Ashamar or whatever is a mobile suit in, with a mobile armor form. So I wouldn't, you know, I, you know, if if I was saying this, you know, this is a transformer, I'd say yeah, it's a total failure. It really just it doesn't make sense. Uh, although this, I think this would be a great um, uh, opportunity for someone to kit bash or or uh, customize it to make it look like Cosmo, Cosmos from Transformers, a G1 character that turned into a, a flying saucer. Uh, I think this is a really, I think like Cosmos is a, a long lost cousin or something. Um, but yeah, first point of criticism, it's one ugly design. You know, there's no way about you know avoiding that. Uh, number two, another issue is that for the transformation there are some issues. Like I double checked the, all the part placement, but I still can't. Like I have these two gaps at the top and bottom here that I can't avoid having. Um, everything else fits in snugly and tightly, uh, but these two two areas here are, are gaps for me. And also the front here where the head antenna usually is, you can fold it down and in all the photos I've seen, this antenna is concealed within. I don't know how people do that um, because even when this isn't folded into this section, when I have it in its normal head form and I just split apart the armor pieces, I can't get them split far enough to allow the antenna to get totally within this uh, recess. So I don't know if what I'm doing wrong. Um, so if any of you guys own the Ashmar or know how to transform this correctly here, please let me know. I would really appreciate some more information. And um, there are there are actually some issues with looseness of parts in mobile suit form. The the shoulders are prone to sort of coming out, uh, just because it, you know it is a transforming design, and so uh, there needs to be some sort of I guess not looseness, but uh, a degree of give to allow it to transform properly, uh, which it does. And there's no problem transforming it. It's a pretty straightforward and easy transformation. It's just that in, in robot or rather mobile suit form, the shoulders are a little loose, and actually the, the feet joints are a little loose. They pop out of the uh, polycap joint from time to time uh, when you're just sort of getting it ready to pose. So that's something else to look out for. Uh, another point of criticism is the fact that the uh, design of the hands here, and you guys probably can't see it too well, but you saw in part one where uh, the hand kind of fell apart while I was just moving it around. And this is like, it's made of three pieces, this back armor piece, and then the hand or fist itself is in two halves. But rather than a front and back or something, it's a top and bottom division of the hand parts. 
and it, it only holds in by pure friction and not very much friction at that. I mean, it just clips in and it should be all right until you sort of move it around and it just it'll pop out. And so I really don't know why Bandai chose to use that design. I mean, I can't, I don't see how it got through the sort of um, testing stage the uh, of the design to have someone say, hey, okay, that's a good design. Or maybe it's just my hand that's loose. I don't know, but I am considering gluing it together because it's pretty annoying um, just for it to fall apart like that. Um, hmm, another issue. I think I think that's it. So I'll move on to my pros, my positive points. Uh, whereas I said before, it's an ugly design, and that is a criticism. Well, one of the positive points is that it's an ugly design. I like the look of the Ashmar in both mobile armor and mobile suit form. I think it's just a really odd and quirky, um, you know, Gundam design. It's so far out there that I just love it. I don't know. I mean, it's not so repulsive to me that I immediately, you know, sort of recoil in horror. Um, and when I first saw this, I, was just, I didn't have any negative in, in, impression. I was just like, wow, that's kind of interesting. And as I sort of looked into the you know, mobile suit design and the model kit, uh, the more and more I liked it and I eventually bought it. So I think for those who want something a little different from their normal Gundam or Mecha designs in their collection, you can't go wrong with the Ashmar. It's definitely the, one of the farthest out there designs that I've, uh, I've seen. Another positive point is the design of the trigger finger hand. It's secure, it doesn't have that odd sort of design of top and bottom parts, and the way that the wrist peg, the ball joint peg here is um, designed with an, you know, at an angle, it's great for, uh, for, for using the gun in it because it, it allows you to really maneuver the wrist around in mobile suit form because it has a chunky large forearm and the rifle itself is pretty big and blocky, so uh, using this angled peg eliminates a lot of the problems that some other designs have in terms of you know model kits with big guns. So this is this is a great touch. Uh, another good point about this model is the action stand, uh, the base. I, I like the fact that uh, not only is one included, but you can use the bottom parts here, the, the little uh, clips for storage of extra, the extra fist, um, the the plate for the uh, the slot for the action base, and. Uh, the adapter for the rifle for the action base. So I like I like the design of this. It's not the only one. There are a few other high-grade Universal Century kits or high-grade kits out there that have a similar setup where the stand can double as a sort of uh, storage um, rack in a way for different parts. So I, I think this is a great touch. And it really stands out to me. Out of all the things in this model kit, this the, the functionality of the action stand is really one of the top things for me. Aside from that, it's also a fairly large model. I didn't pose it earlier uh, for comparison, but it is it is taller than the RX-782 here uh, by probably about that much. So it is another larger than average mobile suit in the uh, in the high grade line. So that's something else you guys might like about it too. But if you're like me, I like to actually have it posed on the action stand to have it in a, in a sort of a mid-flight um, display. And I think that's pretty much it for the model, uh, the pros and cons. I do definitely recommend it, but only to people who, first of all, aren't hating the look of this thing. It's pretty, you know, I mean, it should go without saying, but if you like the look of something, then you probably are halfway uh, to buying it. And in this case, you definitely have to love the look of it. Um, or maybe you're just a big Zeta Gundam fan, and you want to get all of the mobile suits available for that, um, for that anime. So, I mean, the Ashmar is one of them, so get it. Uh, but yeah, like I mean, there's a lot of great things to say about it in terms of the model design. Um, but as far as the mecha design, the mobile suit design, it is you know it's a it's a flat out ugly thing, and it, you you just have to be odd like me to like it um, at all. But I think it's a, a pretty nice looking quirky odd chunky machine, um, and you know the, it is a little expensive. It's you know it's two thousand yen, um, so it is a little more expensive than normal. And, I mean, I think, I, know, I, I really don't know how to justify it. I mean, I, I could, I guess you could say it has more material to, to, to make the price uh, that much higher. I mean, it includes the action base stand type of deal, so that's another thing that could put up the price. Um, but yeah, it is, you know, honestly a little higher on the price side, but not too much. I think, overall, there's a lot of interesting engineering that goes into this model. Uh, again, it's a, it's one of the f relative few true transforming model kits out there. So I mean, even for that fact alone, I would say consider getting this model kit or one of the other model kits out there that have similar capability, like the Methus, um, which I think is also from Zeta Gundam. I'm not too sure. 
Um, but it looks like it has the design look that it is from the same uh, anime. So I guess that does it for this uh, review. I hope you guys enjoyed it and got something out of it, or at least um, brought I brought this you know this odd design to your attention. Uh, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys at the next review.